love to see your frustrated face, but it's probably too pitiful, so I'll refrain. I know it's awkward to see you, so why don't you go hide in the bathroom? The woman on the phone laughs hysterically and mocks me. I hate this woman more than anyone in the world. No, in the entire universe. Thirteen years ago, this woman stole my husband from me. I want to cut ties with her, but it's quite difficult. Because sadly, this woman is my own sister. I chuckled as I held the phone to my ear for a while after it was unilaterally disconnected. My name is Kate, a 37-year-old divorcee. My married life fell apart in just half a year, and it's all because of my sister with a rotten character. I have a fraternal twin sister. Her name is Carly. Our appearance is so identical that even longtime friends mistake us for each other. However, despite our similar looks, our personalities are completely different. I'm more on the quiet side, but Carly was an active class president type. I excel academically, while Carly has better athletic abilities. Carly has a personality of speaking her mind immediately. You manage to wear such tacky clothes so well. We have the same face, so people will think I'm the one who looks tacky. It's the worst. Our sisterly relationship is not as good as it seems. It's fine within the confines of our home, but trouble always seems to follow my sister Carly. Back in our student days... What's your deal hitting on my boyfriend? I often found myself being confronted by girls from other schools on my way home. Of course, I had no personal connection to them. Ugh... Not again, Carly. Whenever Carly developed an interest in someone, she would shamelessly pursue them, regardless of whether they already had a girlfriend. I do think men can be awful, but my sister is the worst. And here I am, mistaken for her, suffering the consequences. What's more, she easily grows bored and breaks up with them, sometimes within just a week. It's truly exasperating. Carly, can't you stop this already? Don't you think about the feelings of the other person's girlfriend? And I'm also bothered by all of this. In response to my words, I'm afraid of the cynicism of unattractive women. Well, what about your man, Murphy, right? He's so plain and I don't think there's any worry of him cheating. You can relax, he's out of the question for me. She proceeded to belittle my boyfriend. This man, Murphy, is the despicable ex-husband who callously abandoned me 13 years ago. We got to know each other at the same cram school and became close. He was more on the quiet side and being with him brought me a sense of peace. His mother was a renowned fortune teller, running her own fortune telling establishment. We graduated from the same university and decided to get married two years later. However, just six months after our marriage, Please, just divorce me. I've reached my limit. You should know the reason, right? He hands me the divorce papers. Sitting next to Murphy with a triumphant expression on her face is my sister, Carly. It all came as such a sudden shock. Huh? Sorry? I don't understand. Did I do something? I have no recollection. In response to my words, my husband slams the desk. What? You've been cheating on me. Can you still say that even after seeing this? Among the several photos lined up on the desk, there were images of a man and a woman entering a hotel together, looking affectionate. But from my perspective, I was simply being shown pictures of my sister Carly entering a hotel with an unfamiliar man. I couldn't understand all the meaning behind Murphy's words. The man in the photos is probably just one of Carly's flings. No, no, this is Carly, it's not me. In that moment, my sister Carly bursts into tears. Kate, stop this. It's painful to deceive Murphy. To my sister's words, Murphy responds. Carly, I'll be fine. You're so kind. Thank you. What are we being shown here? My ex-husband glared at me tightly and began blathering on about a fictional story that never happened. Apparently, I was having an affair and threatened my sister because I didn't want to be found out. According to him, I borrowed clothes from my sister, disguising myself as her and constantly engaged in hotel affairs with various partners. 
Such an outrageous woman, he claims. My ex-husband completely believes this absurd tale he heard from my sister. I heard from Carly that you have always had a bad habit of being involved with multiple men. It seems you were even seeing other men while you were with me. In response to my enraged ex-husband, Hey, are you seriously saying that? Do you believe the stories of my sister whom you've known for only about six months more than me? Whom you've spent years with? Are you sane? Are you stupid? My calm response seemed to displease him as my ex-husband simply glared at me. You claimed it was out of the question, but I never imagined you would go after Murphy. Even though you have the same face, your personalities are completely different. Honestly, you lack charm. Carly would listen to my complaints with a smile. She was so endearing. Maybe I made a mistake in choosing you as my marriage partner. He said such things. Carly, who continued to feign crying, had a smile on her face. As Carly became a working adult, her habit of being involved with men didn't change, but her criteria for targeting men has shifted compared to our student days. She prioritized status and money over appearance, and Murphy worked for a major company, and his family was reasonably well off. Perhaps she had her eyes on those factors from the time of our marriage proposal. It turns out that my ex-husband was completely fooled by my sister's poor acting skills. I couldn't believe that my former long-term partner could be so foolish, and I felt my feelings quickly cool down. You two are the worst, you know. Do whatever you want. Just never appear in front of me again. Tears threatened to, to fall, but I held them back desperately. I signed the divorce papers handed to me on the spot and slammed them back at the two of them. It's my sister who is the only one who has a devious mind. It seems she and Murphy haven't yet become involved romantically. Claiming alimony from him would also be challenging. However, if these two could disappear from my life, I no longer cared about money. Afterward, I returned to my parents' home, but they were furious at my sister's actions and declared their disownment. As for the reaction of the person in question, Oh, whatever. If you ever need help with money, don't come to me or anything. Bye then. Even our own parents treated her with such disdain. I heard from a friend that my ex-husband and sister got married just three months after the divorce. I was so disgusted that I couldn't even cry. I didn't feel anything anymore. For the past 13 years, I haven't seen my sister and her husband. But one day, I received a call on my phone from a payphone. Since it was work-related, I answered it. Hello, Kate. I immediately recognized the voice on the other end of the line. I don't know what kind of nerve you have to contact me. In response to my words, my sister Carly chuckled softly. Are you still holding a grudge? You're still as gloomy as ever, Kate. Well, never mind that. I have a favor to ask you. My sister continued talking without showing any remorse for the past. I'm pregnant. Huh? The father, of course, is Murphy, the one you loved so much. So, I was thinking of announcing it to our parents, as it's their first grandchild. But I doubt those strict parents would listen if I told them directly. So tell them for me. She boldly gave me an order, even though she's been disowned. And what makes you think you can say such audacious things when you've been cut off? I retorted, but Carly had a comeback. And what about you? How many years has it been since then? It's been 13 years. 13 years? I think you're the only one who still holds a grudge. You're probably still living alone in our parents' house, right? I'll be the one to show them a grandchild in your place. She mocked me. This girl is a genius when it comes to irritating people. I thought that while remaining silent, and then Carly continued. I'd love to see your frustrated face, but I guess it's pitiful, so I'll refrain. It would be awkward to me, so why don't you hide in the bathroom or something? She said that while laughing hysterically. And then, I'll come over this weekend. Take care. With that, my sister unilaterally ended the call. 
I held the disconnected phone to my ear for a while and chuckled softly. On that weekend, while I was enjoying a quiet time at home, my smartphone rang. It was a call from a public telephone. I assumed it was my sister. Reluctantly, I answered the call. Hey, unlock the call blocking already, she yelled. What's wrong with blocking calls from someone I don't want to hear from? Isn't that the purpose of call blocking? Oh, I see. Maybe you don't understand because you're not that bright. I chuckled in contempt. In response to her irritation, I heard a few cracking sounds over the phone. I went through the trouble of coming here and no one's home? I told you I was coming today. Huh? Were you serious about that? I thought it was a joke. Besides, you unilaterally hung up the phone, so I didn't say anything, but I no longer live there. I could sense anger and slight agitation in my sister's voice as she spoke. It seemed like she was standing in front of our former house, although nobody lived there anymore. Thinking about the disturbance it would cause to the neighbors if she continued to create a scene, I gave her my current address and hung up the phone. After waiting for about an hour, the intercom rang, and when I answered it, Carly and my ex-husband Murphy were standing there with displeased faces. Carly immediately said, Don't get too cocky. And what are you doing here? Why are you living in such a nice apartment? She yelled at me with bloodshot eyes. It was understandable that my sister was surprised. This place was relatively new and was in good location. The rent was also decent. It wasn't a super luxurious apartment, but it was a nice property. Ignoring Carly's excitement, I said, It's annoying and disruptive there, so why don't you come up? I led them to my apartment, and Carly seemed surprised by the spaciousness. Seeing her frustrated expression, I couldn't help but chuckle. Inside the living room, our mother was sitting on the sofa silently observing my sister. Without uttering a word, she continued to gaze at Carly. So you said you had something to discuss today, right? I'm not bothered by it, but if I'm in the way, should I hide in the bathroom? I sarcastically remarked. Never mind, I don't care anymore. Carly glared at me. And then she approached our mother and said, Mom, it's been a while. I'm pregnant. That's why I wanted to talk today. I hope you'll let us stay here as a couple for a while. Without any sense of remorse for the past, my sister continued speaking. Huh? You want me to live with you guys? No way, that's impossible. Have you forgotten what you did to me in the past? It's out of the question. Before I could finish my words, Kate, just shut up. Besides, isn't this house still under Dad's name? You're an unmarried woman who couldn't even remarry at your age and are just leeching off our parents. Further adding insult to injury, Thanks for your hard work until now. From now on, Murphy and I will take care of our parents' needs while living here together. Can you leave? And what about Dad? Is he at work? My patience had reached its limit with my sisters smirking and laughing. However, it was our mother, who had been silently listening all along, who spoke up before me. If it's about your father, he passed away. My mother muttered just those words. My parents are very serious people, and even though it was Carly, my sister, who was entirely at fault for the divorce 13 years ago, my parents have been apologizing to me all along, especially my father. Oh, I should have done better. It must have been my poor parenting. I'm sorry, Kate. I'm sorry. He became increasingly depressed, to the point where it was difficult for him to continue working. During that time, both my father and mother were still in their early 50s, and our living expenses were supported by my income and my mother's part-time job. After a while, my father was diagnosed with cancer and passed away 10 years ago. Right before his passing, my father said, Please, don't contact Carly about this. If she shows up at my funeral, I feel like I won't be able to go to heaven. True to his words, neither my mother nor I contacted my sister. We moved into this house about five years ago. It was because my mother's health deteriorated due to work-related strain. We considered renovating our family home, but it was located on a hill, and the act of climbing the slope with my mother's condition would have been difficult. That's why we decided to move to this wheelchair-accessible property. Since we started living here, my mother said that her mobility has improved significantly. I thought I was calmly explaining this matter, but when I recalled my father's presence before he passed away, tears welled up. 
I believe my mother felt the same way. There were traces of tears in her eyes as well. However, my sister Carly's reaction to my story was, in a sense, as expected. Even if you tell me now, it's too late. And it's not my fault that Dad got sick, is it? Besides, you're able to live in such a nice place because of Dad's inheritance, right? It's unfair. What about my share? Don't I have the right to inherit too? Carly said these absurd things. Without missing a beat, Mother responded. Inheritance? There's no such thing. You only came crying to us when you got into trouble with your foolish actions before getting married. How many times did you have to pay alimony to the wives of the married men you got involved with? Living with someone who strayed from a right path like you? This is no joke. Don't you dare mock us. It was the first time both my sister and I had witnessed Mother in such a furious state. Perhaps realizing the tense atmosphere, my sister fell completely silent. And then Murphy, my former husband, who had been quiet like a doll until then, spoke up. Carly, maybe you've been deceiving me all along. My life has been a mess since I married you. You're reckless with money and don't do any housework. I had a chance to meet someone from our high school and they all warned me not to marry you, the twin sister. They said it was a terrible idea. I nearly burst out laughing at my ex-husband's words. It's quite something that he managed to stay married to her for 13 years. Furthermore, he approached me and said, Kate, I've regretted our separation for a long time. Would you consider starting over together here? Let's let bygones be bygones. As he said that, he gently reached out to touch my shoulders, sending shivers down my spine. No way, it's disgusting. Let bygones be bygones? Who are you kidding? And it's not something you should be saying in the first place. Just as I was about to deflect his touch, the door of the adjacent room swung open forcefully. Could you please not touch her with your dirty hands? Suddenly a man appeared, surprising both of them with wide-eyed astonishment. Who's that? Ignoring my sister's mutter, I said, I told you to stay hidden and not get involved. In response to my words, Richard said, I had to intervene because he was about to touch you, Kate. Besides, having a third party present can help with the discussion. That might be true, but... This is my husband, Richard. And also, Ryan, come here. This is my eight-year-old son, Ryan. I called out to my son, who had been peeking from the shadow of the door. He stared at my sister and her husband with a piercing gaze as if he had overheard some of their argument. Huh? You got remarried? That's unbelievable! Why? My sister was more surprised than anyone to learn that I had a husband and a son. Murphy, my ex-husband, also seemed to be at a loss for words, his mouth opening and closing like a fish. Why? How many years do you think have passed since then? It's been 13 years. 13 years! Even though so much time has passed, you two haven't changed a bit. It's astonishing. Oh well, at least you've aged significantly in appearance. My sarcastic words made their faces turn red. I met my current husband, Richard, shortly after my father passed away. We worked together and met a few times a year, but one day he asked me out. I said, I'm a divorcee. When I declined, he asked me again, saying, Does being divorced mean you can't be happy? A year later, we got married, and the following year, our son Ryan was born. My husband treated my mother very well, and he never showed any reluctance towards living together. Perhaps it was because his parents, my in-laws, were already living with his brother and sister-in-law. I feel relieved because you're with Richard she said, showing her support. Richard suggested moving to our current house because he was worried about my mother's mobility. Facing the two standing still, I said, My mother and I have our current life. Please, don't interfere. And Carly, you claimed to be pregnant. How many months along are you? Seeing the flustered reactions of the two, it seemed that the pregnancy was also a lie. Although Murphy and I were only married for half a year, I never got pregnant. That became a reason for my ex-mother-in-law to make snide remarks. And the fact that my sister isn't pregnant means that's how it is, I suppose. 
It seems that my sister and my ex-mother-in-law, both having a bad nature, got along well. Unable to withstand the harsh stares from our family, the two of them left the house as if fleeing. I've heard the story, but is she really your biological sister? Her face does resemble yours, but her character is something else entirely. Anyway, I guess this settles the matter. Speaking with a smile, my husband said that. Hmm, I'm not so sure. I replied with a wry smile. That evening, something happened. The intercom kept ringing continuously. Looking at the monitor, I sighed. <sighs> I knew they'd come. When I opened the door, there stood my pale-faced sister and my ex-husband. I need your help. I need money. Please, lend me money. They pleaded desperately. My husband wore a puzzled expression, but my mother and I had a different reaction. And during the day, while waiting for my sister's call, my mother received a message from someone. It was from a friend of my lay father's who currently lives in my former parents' house, which is now rented out to their family. When they returned home, they had found the garden flower beds trampled and the window glass cracked. The security camera captured the image of a furious woman stomping on the flower beds and hurling stones at the glass. Of course, it is my sister Carly who is furious on the phone with me. When my mother shared my sister's contact information with our friend, he learned that my sister had been the one who had caused his dear friend, my father, years of suffering, and this enraged him. Among the damaged plants, there were reportedly precious flowers that were difficult to follow. It seems he also demanded compensation for the damages. I anticipated their reappearance due to their evident financial difficulties and struggles with housing, but I never imagined they would show up on that particular day. I was impressed by their energy. I can give you the money if you want, but there is a condition. Afterwards, as I watched the two of them dejectedly walking away, I couldn't help but laugh and say, Serves you right. In my hand, I held the freshly signed agreement. As a condition for taking on this matter on their behalf, I made them sign a pledge to never approach us again. Still, Carly is my blood-related sister. Cutting ties with her completely is difficult. There might come a time when she will try to approach us again using this privilege. At that time, I'm prepared to fight, whether it be in court or anywhere else using the secretly recorded audio from 13 years ago in this incident. That's how determined I am not to forgive my sister and her husband in the future. I later heard from a friend that my ex-husband quit his job at a major company right after divorcing me and started working as a staff member at the fortune-telling establishment managed by my former mother-in-law. He and my sister seemed to live a luxurious life with a high salary because they were relatives. However, a few months ago, my former mother-in-law suddenly passed away due to illness. My ex-husband took over as the successor, but he had no talent for fortune-telling. The fortune-telling establishment quickly became deserted. In a panic, my sister and her husband. This is a bracelet made with heartfelt intentions by our late mother. It seems they started a business telling lies to the people who had faith in the late mother-in-law. However, their lies were exposed through internal whistleblowing and now a victim's association has been established. The fortune-telling establishment is being inundated with victims every day as it served as their workplace and residence. With nowhere else to go, my sisters sought refuge in our home. It's absolutely audacious and infuriating. However, considering the police's recent actions, it's only a matter of time before the two of them face legal consequences. After that, we moved again. It was due to my husband Richard's job transfer. Am I really allowed to come along? With an apologetic look, my mother asked, what are you saying? You are a cherished member of our family. Even if you resist, I'll carry you forcefully and take you with us. My husband Richard joked and laughed. Thank you. She shed tears of gratitude. Grandma is crying again. Here, take this tissue. While Ryan, my son, chuckled and expressed concern over my mother's easily moved nature, I watched the scene of my family with a sense of gratitude for the happiness I currently had.